When Mr. Barrett reached out to me and shared that the theme for this year's Black History Month celebration was dreams, I thought long and hard about what to prepare with the jazz band. Appropriately enough, in the end, I settled on a piece called Dream Time, but not for the obvious reason. It's a composition that holds no special historical significance, yet it speaks directly and strongly to the theme, not only in name, but also, and more importantly, through the man who wrote it, the great Benny Carter. A largely self-taught musician, Carter's impact resonated across time and contexts. He was a seminal stylist on the alto saxophone, drawing admirers and imitators from the 1920s on forward, and his pen helped to define the big band era as he wrote for bands led by Duke Ellington, Benny Goodman, Fletcher Henderson, Glenn Miller, Artie Shaw, Count Basie, and numerous others. In the mid-40s, he shifted his concentration and began to focus on television and film work on the West Coast. And in doing so, he not only created work of lasting value, writing for and appearing on numerous soundtracks, but he also tore down barriers. He opened the door for black musicians to work in that setting, won a legal battle in 1945 against restrictive covenants that prohibited black families from owning homes in some areas of Los Angeles, and helped to merge the separate black and white American Federation of Musicians, Locals, in Los Angeles in the early 50s. He rightly believed that race should have nothing to do with anybody's acceptance. Highly skilled as a saxophonist, clarinetist, and trumpeter, not a common combination, given the crossing between woodwind and brass, Carter remained an in-demand jazz musician throughout his entire life. And he also discovered a love of teaching that continued to blossom in his later years. In the 1970s, for example, he conducted seminars at Harvard and Princeton. Awards, including a Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences and recognition through the Kennedy Center Honors, naturally came his way. And Carter continued to record, tour, teach, and serve as a guest soloist on into his 90s, in the mid-1990s, which is when this piece, Dream Time, was written. Active across eight decades, Benny Carter saw and did it all. As noted jazz author and historian Ed Berger said, he's the only artist to have made an acoustic recording through an old-fashioned horn before electrical records were made, and then lived to see his own website. He served as a role model in so many ways, and we're very happy to pay tribute to him with this performance of Dreamtime, featuring our lead alto saxophonist, Ty Ellenbogen. <laughs> 